There is something odd about the Atari 2600 Plus, and maybe nothing at all, but then again, who knows, right? This all started for me yesterday on AtariAge.com, where the 1.1 firmware for the Atari 2600 Plus was being tested. You can find it here. I follow the instructions of the page to update the firmware, but in the step where it says the USB device will show up as an unknown device in the Windows 11 Device Manager, I instead saw this. It says, Evercade Firmware Download Device. Evercade Firmware Download Device? Weird, eh? My first thought was that the Evercade might use the same ROC chip SOC as the 2600 Plus uses. Since I've updated the firmware in my Evercade with the same Windows 11 computer in the past, it might have simply recognized it as the same device. I still think this might be true. According to this post on AtariH.com, the Atari 2600 Plus uses the ROC chip 3128 SOC. Wikipedia says that Evercade uses the ARM Cortex-A7, but doesn't specify the model number. However, on closer inspection, the ROC chip 3128 is also an ARM Cortex-A7. So that's it, right? They use the same SOC. End of story. Maybe. But then, I recall that Blaze Entertainment announced that they were dropping all Atari titles just after the 2600 Plus was announced earlier this year. At that time, this just seemed like a way for Blaze to soft exit titles that maybe were not selling well. But maybe there's more to the story. I then went and checked the Play-In website, searching for Evercade, and I found this. I had to translate from German to English to read it. It was a news article that said the Evercade EXP Retro Handhold Console is now available from the Play-On press server, and it says that PlayOn is an independent developer and producer of games and entertainment products. So PlayOn, who makes the 2600 Plus for Atari, which shows up as an Evercade when connected via USB to Windows PC, just happens to also have a relationship of some kind with Blaze, the company that makes Evercade? This brought a few questions in mind. Did PlayOn develop the Atari Kart Dumper software for Blaze? Did Blaze think the Atari Kart Dumper software support was, was proprietary or just for them? Did PlayOn use Evercade tech on the 2600 Plus, making Blaze angry enough to completely drop Atari support? This could all just be simple coincidences, but I still find it all also very intriguing. What is happening between Atari, Evercade, and PlayOn? I guess time will tell. Maybe it's nothing, but maybe it's interesting.